Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. Now, when it comes to Eve, uh, first of all, CCP just released a new video, a bit of an update on the development cycle that uh, CCP is planning for Eve Online. And basically, the biggest announcement there is that CCP is launching a dedicated team for game balancing. So they are listening to the player base that has been doing a lot of discussions, especially around the strengths and the difficulty when it comes to attacking um, um, citadels uh, and, and structures in general. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll give you guys a quick analysis on that. Uh, I do think that this basically means that we are still um, on the roadmap for my personal expectations, which is that CCP is first going to do the winter release where they're going to get rid of outposts and uh, change the, those to faction citadels. But after that, we will get nerfs uh, to some of the strengths of the structures that are uh, considered to be real problems, such as uh, one that, uh, of course, I don't know about or, or I've never really experienced myself, which are the void bombs, because you can't use those in high sec. Um, but apparently they are just too powerful and they, they stifle the meta a lot, which that'll probably get fixed. And then another big one is of course the fact that it takes a week to knock over a structure, uh, but uh, they are so cheap and so easy to deploy that basically the biggest tactic that is disrupting I would say null sick, wormhole space and low sick as well for faction warfare is the fact that if you're attacking someone uh, you can just drop 10 of, of those or 20 of those uh, with, with uh, difficult uh, and timers all over the place making it impossible for the defenders to uh, keep you from having uh, a base of operations right in the middle of their, their own uh, system and uh, of course then it becomes almost impossible to get rid of you because it takes a week to kill just a single structure and then of course your assets will start to bounce around be between structures and so it's, it's just very difficult to kick out an attacker that has started deploying uh, a lot of structures and the very first phase tends to be just deploy a ton of structures uh, make it impossible for the defenders to knock them all over uh, while on the first week timer and after that, well, game is on and uh, it, it, it becomes really such a, a, a trench warfare that uh, not a lot of people are willing to engage in that. But so good news on the horizon, CCP is uh, going with a, a balanced team that's going to look at all of these problems. This August, there will also be a CSM meeting that will talk about all of these problems, but maybe a little, I'll play devil's advocate here for, for, uh, for a moment. Yeah, CCP is maybe announcing all of that to tie us over a little bit, because I still think that the original plan was to first get to the winter expansion get rid of the outposts maybe get rid of bosses as well or at least put that on the roadmap uh, to to being phased out and only then uh, start doing the tweaks and the rebalancing of the structures when it comes to defensibility and things like that and i still think that that's basically the result that we're going to get although they will start to come out with concrete announcements and ccp seagull to be fair also said that some of those features uh, if they can uh, develop them and plan them quickly they're planning to bring those pretty quickly as well so maybe they'll they'll they basically decide to speed up the process a little bit seeing uh, the the amount of, uh, of of discussion that's been going up out uh, going on about all of this and I think a lot of people make very good points when it comes to especially the problems with structures and then of course shorter term next week we'll get the agency uh, CCP's second attempt at going with some daily quest type system in uh, in Eve Online I personally think that there is room for something like that in Eve uh, they just need to to strike the right balance between uh, grinding rewards, time investment and things like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, from the video, they're basically also planning to develop more of these timed short term uh, events to try and tell a story to uh, put some uh, some conflict and some interesting uh, story aspect into EVE Online. I'm all for that uh, because those are always fun to play. Um, as long as they're not too grindy and the reason to uh, keep logging into uh, to EVE Online as well. Now, a uh, pretty long intro, but we are here for the market, of course. And as always, we are going to start off with our plexus at 445. And there we go. And you can see that plexus did go down a little bit and now basically are stabilizing around or just below the 3 million mark 
on the chart if we look at the prices for plexus we take the filter out they're just below 3 million most of them uh, below 3 million are being sold in player owned trade hubs like perimeter and morrissey uh, mostly after that they go up to 3 million in perimeter and then in Gita we get 3 million 30,000 uh, is basically for the sellers the buyers are at 2 million 937 uh, thousand isk and uh well again uh you do see a lot a lot of trade happening especially in morrissey here on the buyer side of things so lots of buy orders being placed here and after that gita of course does take over a little bit when it comes to some of the volumes although this is quite respectable here as well two million uh, two thousand units several quite a few orders of that so uh plexus uh, are probably down on the uh, monthly economic reports that actually showed that CCP must have uh, done done quite a bit of banning when it comes to uh, the shadow uh, training uh, that was happening uh, because the actual amount of ISK in the game on active accounts went down by I think like 17 trillion or something like that so despite all the ratting that's being done which is quite a lot uh, there was a CCP intervention uh, it's either that or so many players somehow stopped that uh, that it went negative but with alpha clones right nobody really stops in the game um, it it is probably to do with uh, with with the shadow trading and uh, CCP banning a lot of assets and isks that they got maybe from that and probably also from the hundreds of accounts that all got Concord chips for instance um, so I think that, uh, that that's a big part of the drop here unfortunately looks like it's already over and Plex at 3 million I think will basically uh, have to get used to that I, I do st still hold out and hope a little bit for a pullback in Plex to somehow be able to notice and, and, and find a right buy opportunity to see them as an investment but at the moment it really does look like the market is not going to go away from 3 million which is 1.5 billion for 30 day games uh, 30 days game time so that's still very very expensive and uh, at the moment yeah i just i just don't see it pull back to like let's say 2.5 million or even 2 million um, which it was before of course uh, everything was decoupled so just don't see it happening personally uh, but who knows what the summer will bring i i tend to often be wrong in my uh, wrong in my predictions as well here so yeah plex very expensive a little bit of a of a downtrend here uh, probably due to ccp banning a lot of isk uh, is this the right time to buy uh, that is difficult to say it's probably very expensive at the moment for people that are looking to actively plex their accounts so not to pay the sub but to, uh, to pay with Plex that they buy in game. Lots of work to actually get those at the moment. Let's move on to some skill. Uh, no, first we'll do the multiple pilot trade certificate. Yeah, because of the name changes, all of this has become a little bit more tricky to, um, to find the right order in. But here are the multiple pilot trade certificates that should give us an indication of uh, Plex prices uh, for 30, day game, uh, 30 days game time but that's not happening at the moment because of course they've been on sale for quite a while it seems volumes have gone up substantial towards 200 sold every day and they are currently selling for 1 billion 271 million so compared to plex themselves you just have to do that price times 500 and compare that if what you're looking to do with the plex is to train a second character on your account at the moment you're much better off buying the training certificate uh, because that's like 230 million is in profit the buyers are at 1.2 billion one thing to keep in mind of course this is a very tiny market once those sales are over we're bound to get a pretty big buyout here and uh, prices will probably shoot up towards plex very quickly although there's actually a decent amount of them that have been brought to the market so the sale must have been uh, pretty damn substantial uh, next up let's go for the skill extractors of course this is actually a very strong correlation between uh, the ex uh, with uh, with plexus and you can see here as well that we went down substantially five day moving average crossing the 20 day moving average but at the end here last few days we're actually starting to move sideways again skill extractors are being sold for well there's one seller of 336 million isk but it's actually 339 uh, if we disregard just that one sell order and 
a little bit being sold in perimeter and after that Gita takes over the bars are at 330 million is which is a decently high price of course for a skill extractor which is what you need to create a skill injector but as I said there is a very strong correlation between these extractors and plexus and as a result yeah since plexus are so high at the moment so are the extractors let's take a look at the injectors next that is actually very interesting they basically had a little bit of a drawback that was happening a little bit before the plex uh, the plex uh, correction but since then they've actually gone back up and are once again slowly heading towards that price above 750 million and towards a price that is close to a one year high as well so 745 million for the sellers quite a bit of action in perimeter on this one for the sellers although the volumes you know 6 10 a uh, couple here 49 are quite decent and then we come here to uh, Gita itself at almost 760 million is yep that's uh, quite a bit higher here on the chart and then the buyers are up to 731.5 million so a large skill extractor almost uh, three quarters of a billion is quite expensive and I do think that a lot of people will be starting to move into uh, the skill injectors as basically a store of uh, value because it is a combination of basically plex prizes real life money and of course the added value of skill points that are invested in there and generally speaking uh, the value of skill points uh, should not deteriorate either so all of this does make the large skill injectors a very interesting i think um a very interesting uh, good, a very interesting product to look at as both, both an investment and a store against uh, inflation, but also as uh, a trade opportunity because of course you never really know what's happening uh, in the skill point market. That is something that can be very volatile on CCP interventions. And so as the game develops, you can expect two things. You can expect the baseline for skill injectors, which are of course the ex extractor prices to go up on inflation. And then another thing is that of course, when skill points uh, all of a sudden see an increase in demand, which often happens when CCP changes something to the meta, changes something in into the game, or brings new skills that are very interesting because of new structures, new uh, abilities, new modules, things like that. There is of course the surge in demand, which makes uh, for a it, it to become much more likely to basically uh, find those buy and sell opportunities within this market. I think it's going to be a lot easier to do that in the skill injectors. We'll see more volatility, more opportunities there than we will in the Plex market. That is basically mostly tied to inflation at the moment and is also, I think, a little bit manipulated by some really big players at the moment so moving on to the small skill injectors we can see that here at the tail end we're actually almost going down a little bit with the five day moving average is it the same with the large skill injector well we're hesitating at the current price range and so the small skill injectors are going for 150 million isk and the bars at 145 pretty narrow margin here actually so yeah, personally, I actually like the, the large scale injectors as basically taking over the role of the old 30 day plex there as, as uh, the, the go to item when you've got ISK lying around. I actually think that that could definitely be happening. It's been my prediction and seeing this added volatility right here a little bit before plexus went down a tiny bit on the money supply announcement here. Large scale injectors actually have uh, yeah a bit more volatility, a bit more um, yeah in percentage as well, a bit more of an interesting chart when it comes to your investments. Keep in mind as well, of course, we're pretty close to that one year high once again on skill injectors moving on to some minerals at 14 minutes let's go as always we will start with tritanium good news for us high sec miners here tritanium heading towards 5.5 is on the chart and uh, up quite substantially from the very low point of early march um, so currently let's um, get to the gita uh, orders here because you can see that most of these go four jumps seven jumps six jumps couple here in perimeter but they're also very small in volumes so when it comes to minerals it's really the Gita uh, 4 4 that is the selling market and then the buyers yeah we do have some of these uh, buyers that tend to come in 
um, as well with those buy orders from a jump out because they uh, can uh, get lower taxes that way it's actually the smart way to do it uh, but when it comes to minerals it doesn't play that big a role just yet so when it comes to tritanium sellers are at 557 tritanium back above 5.5 isk pretty awesome should increase our isk per hour a little bit when it comes to the high stake mining and the bars are above 5 isk as well here you can see first bar coming at 511 in perimeter after that it's just around 5 isk in Gita station itself but if these come in with big enough volumes almost a billion here 700 million here at 1.3 billion at 495 there is a little bit of hope that this will uh, become a bit of a floor and that will basically start to see tritanium move at least from uh, 5 isk and upwards which I think would be really good it's been a long time since we've seen that the bad news is of course some people are going to try and take advantage of these uh, higher prices you can see here 1.4 billion being dropped once we get above 6 isk we've got another 4 5 billion that is being dropped right here so it's going to be a bumpy ride but at the moment it looks like mineral prices at least for the high minerals tr are trending up a little bit if uh, tritanium is the indication let's take a look at pyrite then that one is already immediately um telling a different story it is still basically stuck below six isk after trying to crawl out of the hole this is the the bumpy ride that i was basically talking about we went towards um 6.5 maybe something like that uh on on the chart here and what is the very first response a big player with a lot of volume here decided to dump billions of pyrite dropping the price back down below six isk and now it's having a hard time getting out of that 573 for the sellers the buyers are coming in at 546 at the moment a first buy order is in fact inside jita itself so this is of course uh, a threat that could also happen to tritanium if tritanium would all of a sudden shoot up towards six isk and there are a couple of investors around there that have bought it at four 4.5 isk there's quite a bit of buy opportunity right there they are going to dump massive volumes and then as i've said we may be in for a bumpy ride but at least at the tail end here there is a slight uptrend to be seen on the chart as well for pyrite so let's hope for good news in the upcoming weeks next up we've got mixalon um, on this one i'm actually not seeing this as being such bad news why because you can see that the peak for mixalon in march which was the very low point of tritanium was actually at 80 is historically a very good price for mixalon having to give some ground here is basically natural market forces as people are mining less feldspar uh, less other uh, ores that don't yield mixalon and are focusing a lot on the mixalon uh, production itself because it is, will be your best isk per hour um, as a result we have this constant pressure here that is still maintaining mixalon prices above 70 isk so not that bad well, just below 70 isk in fact 69.26 for the sellers and the buyers are at 68 isk so that market is trying to find itself it's still at 70 isk not as good as 80 of course but still a very decent price for Mexalon that is probably needed a decent amount in Nalsec as well. Isogen next. I was hoping for a, a chart that was going up unfortunately that is not happening but here very similar uh, story to pyrite and the one threat to this upwards momentum that tritanium seems to be indicating we can see that um, isogen went very close to 60 isk up to 57 58 here and as a result massive volumes coming in crashing the price back down as some people unload their isogen at the first opportunity of selling um, so if if you're stuck with a lot of these minerals as an investor yourself of course you're watching these charts as a hawk and on the first opportunity lots of them are trying to sell that is the bumpy ride that i was talking about and here in isogen it's happening as well in fact in the last few days on lower volumes we're going lower in price as well back below 50 isk uh, isogen is selling for 50.14 and the buyers are coming in at 48 isk less than 50 for isogen just seems to be a little bit too common uh, when it comes to uh, isogen sources at the moment 
Finally, for the mostly Hasek related minerals, we've got Anoxium. Did a decent, good, a decently good climb out of the hole from March here as well, where it went as low as 300 ISK. Uh, managed to go back towards 400 ISK, but now in the last few weeks, again, we have this peak up here towards 400. Not really seeing a massive volume response, but yeah, the market is deciding that uh, nope, not it's not gonna happen. Around 350 for Anoxium is enough. 351 for the seller. 342 for the buyers of Noxium at the moment. Moving on to some Nelsic minerals, here is Zytrine. Slight uptrend, very interesting in my opinion. We had some buy opportunities below 1000 ISK in the last few months. I picked up a little bit of that Zytrine, but not that much. As I always say, uh, especially when you're seeing Zytrine go for 1000 ISK, I think it's definitely okay to buy some of that if you're planning to use it as well then definitely do so but as an investment you always felt a little bit risky but looks like uh, yeah it's going in the right direction for Zytrine 1079 for the sellers and the buyers are at 1039 so both of those went above 1000 ISK just a couple of weeks ago you could have easily picked up some Zytrine for less than 1000 ISK on the buyer side Mega site next. Uh, that one is basically moving flat at 1250. We had a little bit of a run up, maybe 10, 10 to 15 days ago here, uh, where we had an attempt at a breakout. It just didn't happen, and we're basically flat just below 1250. Currently, Mega site is selling for let's say 1200 ISK, and the buyers are at 1150 as well. Most buyers here again coming in on the station. Although, yeah, if you go for the bigger orders, it makes more sense to go for a player station for your buy order and set the range to one so you can pick up stuff in Gita that way as well. Um, and finally we also have, also have more fight of course a little bit of down pressure at the tail end here quite interesting 8700 today so far so we have uh, sellers at 9300 buyers at 8100 that is some pretty cheap more fight basically a lack of demand here is pushing the price back down substantially coming close to uh, interesting investment territories if you can pick some more fight up at 8150 8200 to try and really get that price uh, down there then uh, I think you're not doing a bad investment right here but again keep in mind don't pour all your isk in some of these opportunities you have to be a little careful as well moving on to some pi next 22 minutes okay and uh, for pi uh, something changed uh, on as a request i added the integrity response drones so let's start with construction blocks um very interesting year so far I, I i would say when it comes to pi we basically had a very strong uh, early year here you can see that construction blocks went up in february march april up to may then we had a really big downfall and at the moment we're basically moving starting to move sideways i think around average prices for most of this pi i'm still holding on for lower activity summer lower prices as well but who knows we'll have to start looking at possible um, moments for us to uh, may maybe make a move on the bar side of things here are construction blocks uh, pi also knew a very strong summer last year which is rather uncharacteristic so perhaps as i've said these could become buy opportunities at the moment already but i'm personally holding on for slightly uh, lower market yet but yeah construction blocks around 12,000 isk on average pretty much average prices here 12,429 for the sellers 11,800 for the buyers and just a couple of those buy orders uh, later will be at 11,500 that's basically what i'm waiting for i'm waiting for some of these um yeah higher buy orders they're not that expensive even to drop out but if we could get to that 11,400 something like that um, buying these construction blocks for less, less than 11.5 i think would make a lot of sense uh, to try and pick some of those up so at the moment we can still see lots of supply 62,000 37,000 here another 22,000 here quite a bit of uh, supply available when it comes to construction blocks lots of competition pushing the price down to 12,400 ISK around average this is not a bad price for construction blocks but the buyers yeah they're 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 in it for 50,000 units at 11,500 we just need to get rid of a couple of these and then I think we are going to start to see some interesting opportunities so construction blocks after a very strong what is this early year here definitely climbing one up to May back in 
regular average prices. Consumer Electronics Next is still working on that. So here is a strong August, September, bit of a downtrend uh, in January, but then again, April, May, very strong, up to 17,000 ISK about that. In June here, uncharacteristically, we had a final spur up, but now it does look like we're dropping back towards average prices. We're still above that, I would say, 14,800 for the sellers, 13,100 for the buyers. So we're still above average, especially on the seller side of things. But you can see here that the buyers are dropping pretty drastically pretty wide margin between these two and as a result the pressure is on i would say 12,500 on average is still possible for consumer electronics before uh, the chart goes back up so yeah consumer electronics a little bit late to the party but working on getting back to the regular prices coolants here uh, a little bit of a jump out but still nothing all too worrying 12,800 as the at the high point a slight sell opportunity maybe you could have picked some up here close to 11,000 isk currently selling for 13,400 and the buyers are well a couple of are up to 12,600 but again on big supply which is coming in apparently here 113,000 units 46,000 units another 38,000 units more than a full front page uh, in the last 24 hours including 863,000 units at 13,449 it's pretty obvious that there is a lot of supply for coolants and that this will not last so we'll go back towards average prices currently uh, coolants are selling for a little bit above average but you can clearly see that supply is big enough that this is going to get squashed quite quickly maybe those two buyers getting away 2600 once we see buyers below 12,000 I don't think it's that interesting just yet, but uh, that is when we can start to really look for that buy opportunity if that's a trend that continues. So um, coolants a little bit early with the high point here in February, but again, strong September, strong February, a bit more volatility and uh, more pronounced buy opportunities, I would say here at less than 11,000 ISK on coolants. Enrich Uranium next. That one is still staying quite strong. Uh, it is tied to fuels but uh, is still doing pretty damn well at the moment, well above average, 17,000 is on the chart. Uh, but the four, first seller coming in here below 17,000 is pro maybe trying to start a, a new uh, bidding war down from this price point, could be quite interesting, but let's disregard that 17,200, uh, almost 300 for the sellers, 16,100 for the buyers. So well above average, not a bad price for uranium. Again, really decent margin. Oh, damn. <coughs> um, sorry about that. Really decent margin between those two. Um, and you do, I think, see a little bit of down pressure as well. I don't think that this will last all that long. You see here again, 50,000 units, 30,000 units, 30 here. There is a big investment in perimeter, trying to pick up 188,000 units at uh, 16,100. But again, that's a pretty wide margin. There is room for this to fall back. In the last uh, few weeks, though, we went back up to pretty good price for Enrich Uranium. Next up, the request, Integrity Response Drones. Um, okay, very interesting one, a little bit uncharacteristic compared to most of the others. This is advanced PI material though. So we have uh, a peak in December up to 3.75 million ISK. I think that this is tied to structures as well. That would explain why we have a high point around and just after uh, the launch of the engineering complexes. After that, we had a bit of a drop back towards 2.5 million, but here pretty massive investment happening in the last few days, pushing the price back up. On the sellers, 2.8 million. On the buyers, 2.675 million. So yeah, integrity response drones. We can see here that basically we're a little bit late for that investment party. We went below 2.5 million and some people came in with quite a bit of buying, 18,000 units and 12,000 units. Someone is planning something pretty big, I think, when it comes to structures. Mechanical parts next. Uh, those are jumping up a little bit, but basically starting to move in a um, average band here, 11 to 12,000 is currently selling for 12,100. Buyers are at 11,600. Here you can see only 400 uh, as the margin, much closer, and still 98,000 here, 100,000 here, 111,000 here. Those are a bit older though. So even on fresh, well, with the lack of fresh supply, 
prices go up a little bit but on on any uh really breakout of the price we'll see massive supply come in push mechanical parts back on these averages so yeah after a strong march april mechanical parts are back to average prices i would say oxygen next trying to get there um maybe a little bit below average still but 420 on average not so bad 431 for the sellers 420 for the buyers very easy to produce of course and currently maybe selling a little bit below average but a buy opportunity is of course closer to this uh, price range 350 360 is what we would like to see uh, so that's unfortunately over but here again um, strong summer up to 550 strong March again peak up to 550 as well a little bit of an overcorrection I think this is normal because of how easy oxygen is to produce and now currently trying to basically find those average prices robotics next this one I find very interesting because we actually had a pretty strong summer it doesn't look like it on the chart but up to 110,000 this is actually definitely above average for robotics but then here in March we had to speak up to 125,000 or something like that and then a, a, a drop off but during these last few months basically robotics have been constantly declining on fresh supply but they have not really been uh, below average or anything like that they, they've always been at pretty good sell price 120 110 those are actually good sell prices for robotics it is only in the last few weeks that we're starting to play with that 100,000 isk mark and sellers need to dip just below that buyers towards 90,000 95,000 isk that's where we have basically average robotics prices so currently robotics are selling for 103,000 isk the buyers are just below 100,000 isk this is still a tiny bit above average but again we can see that pressure and we can see that we're moving back to average prices for pi at the moment so then the question will become of course um summer with buy opportunities below average or nope are we going to actually see another strong summer because in general there is increased demand due to the structures uh, maybe through all the lines more fuels as well things like that that's a possible scenario as well i'm hoping for the first one but keep in mind that the second one is definitely possible as well because of course i also have my eye on some of those uh, advanced ones that are directly tied to structures uh, because we need those if we want to for instance set up a large refinery here is a rocket fuel um, this is a very unusual one i'm actually pretty happy that i was here very stable this, this actually went back for for almost a year i think very very stable at around 12,000 isk then all of a sudden in february we had this jump up to 14 15,000 isk and now lately we had the correction with maybe a bit of an over correction less than 12 12,000 isk at the moment yeah 11,600 for the sellers 11,000 for the buyers rocket fuel could actually be in an interesting place if you want to actually do an investment in pi i would look at maybe picking some of that up keep again in mind one two three four nope just one two three um buy orders gone and we're at 10,200 isk this is of course the buy opportunity that i would like to jump on and to see happening i'm not sure if it is actually going to happen of course self-harmonizing power of course next yeah someone uh, came in for structures we can see it here on integrity response drones self-harmonizing power course again a trigger happened 2 million isk uh, as an average price here someone came in 22,000 all of a sudden and yesterday another 15,000 is bringing the price up from 2 million to 2.3 million almost for the sellers 2.2 for the buyers so this is the investment cycle that we will see throughout the summer and it's up to you to be on the ball when it comes to actually uh, buying these for your own structures and uh, it's it's not always easy because there are of course really big players I mean I don't think that I have the wallet for 22,000 units all of a sudden uh, in just 150 orders as well but all of that basically got they spent the isk they they got their investments uh, up and running whether it is to build something or to maybe try and make a profit i don't know but i definitely don't think they're making a mistake because at 2 million uh, it is pretty low and that seems to be the trigger for the market so keep that in mind if you're looking for those yourself superconductors are going up in price a little bit i basically think that superconductors are needed for a lot of these um, advanced ones 
and as a result of course with a lot of buying there we'll need more superconductors to produce more uh, come up with more supply 13,700 for the sellers 13,200 for the buyers again pretty narrow margin this on increased prices indicates that there is basically a lot of demand all of a sudden and uh, yep superconductors maybe a little bit above average at these price ranges Test cultures next, basically very flat at the current price range, uh, selling for 8,200, buyers are at 7,700. Um, it is difficult to say, we see here in December that the potential is for uh, really nice percentages, went up to 15,000 ISK and it did so as well, I think early summer. And uh, as a result here, uh, I have some investments of test cultures, but I'm not going to go bonkers and, and put billions in this market either. It's a bit too stable for that we might actually see a drop off as well if my summer prediction comes true wet wear mainframes next happening again here structure preparations whether it's investments or to build stuff I, co I couldn't tell you but the trigger on this one again very close to 2 million and then all of a sudden another 23,000 units and 15,000 units seem suspiciously close to one another this could really be investments uh, 2.4 million for the sellers 2.2 million for the buyers so again uh, we'll, we'll hope that fresh supply can bring those prices back down but keep that 2 million uh, in mind that does seem to be the uh, the trigger for investors or for a, a lot of buying all of a sudden so on on these down slopes here and same for self self harm rising power cores that's when you want to try to pick a couple of up uh, hopefully uh, yeah probably a little bit above 2 million unfortunately so it's going to be tricky for these to dip below 2 million which i was hoping for uh, but uh, apparently it's going to be very difficult to do so yeah, interesting PI week and uh, yeah, integrity response drones. I hope it makes sense that uh, it's here as well. Next up, we have some Tech One chips at 36 minutes. Still trying to keep it under an hour. Let's hope it works. Uh, we'll go over these. Abaddon going up to 200 million. Very nice. Try to dip back down, but nope, still coming back on some volumes. Quite interesting. Abaddon selling for 205 million ISK. Bars are at 170 million ISK. Um, quite interesting. All right. The first battleship coming back to uh, before ascension prices, basically. Um, sometimes here that's volumes pushing the price up here we also have a bit more volume all of a sudden more than 20 being sold every day quite interesting um, they would of course be the first to move on higher mineral prices because they need more minerals of the tech one ships that we tend to check here but is this a uniform move across the tech one market here's the caracal moving back down below 10 million so i would say no uh, 9.6 million for the sellers, 9.3 for the buyers, the Caracal here basically hovering below that 10 million ISK as an average price, which is definitely well below pre-ascension prices right here up to 12 million. The Coveter next, also in the last couple of days, giving well, basically moving sideways, I would say at 25 million before ascension, 35 million. Of course, this also has something to do with the Orca rebalance, but 26 million for the sellers, 23.5 0.6 let's say for the buyers um, it's still it's a little bit better than the March dip here but it's it's not there there is no uniform uptrend to be spotted um, so the Abaddon may just be uh, fleet preparations or something like that from Nelsic um, it would make sense for CVA I think so CVA is a bit of a role play alliance they love Amar ships and they are very likely to become a target maybe this summer or definitely before the winter because they have so many outposts that they would be the real winners of the transition from outposts to uh, faction citadels and uh, I think that preemptively some of the big groups are actually going to try and take a lot of those and so we are likely to see a war in um, uh, in Providence uh, now this is more happenstance than an actual reason why I delayed the move but looking at it from that perspective if it is true that uh, this this interest in Abaddon is CVA preparing for a war in Providence because they're likely to be targeted for all of their outposts then uh, maybe delaying the move might be the right thing because then right next door I might be able to get some cool footage of a war happening. Uh, moving on to the Ferox here again downtrend after going up to 55 million ISK it's 
the one uh, battle cruiser that's actually doing really well compared to pre-accession prices didn't have to pay that much of a price but it's already back down now to less than 50 million currently selling for 48 million bars are at 43 million and that is of course less than the average of 55 before ascension but it sometimes jumps up back uh, above that and basically this is because it is an old sec uh, doctrine um, for uh, for some groups here so people actively uh, buy up fleets of those when they see the right buy opportunity probably at around 45 million hurricane next up a little bit in the last week or so but very timid increase to 47 million 48 for the sellers 44.3 for the buyers decent amount of supply coming in right away you can see here in the last 24 hours full front page almost bring the price from 49 to 47 million so this is a slight uptick that is going to get squashed by fresh supply very quickly unfortunately the uh, the um, tick one market is in general in that situation here is the maelstrom um, here before ascension so october here 200 million currently meandering at the 160 range 163 for the 163 million for the sellers 151 for the buyers of maelstrom lack of supply this does give a little bit of credence to my uh, cva um, theory it's 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 just a theory it's a random thought i may be completely wrong uh, but uh, considering where the maelstrom is which is actually i think also uh, something that can be flown as as a nelsic battleship doctrine at the moment it's just not not being done uh, but yeah that basically uh, that one would have gone up as well if it was a general battleship meta resurgence or something like that here's the megatron did manage to jump up to 170 but you can see here that uh, this gets squashed very quickly by fresh supply we're back to 160 for a megatron in fact 156 for 156 million for the sellers 146 for the buyers definitely very cheap mag megatrons compared to before ascension and uh, 2711 coming in here uh, is not going to fix that the prophecy next that one also uh, knew a nice little upswing to close to 60 million again an a ship but it's only a battle cruiser much easier to produce and as a result it's being uh, brought back down to 46 million 49 for the uh, sellers 44.7 for the buyers uh, not on massive volumes basically we can see here that we just uh, maybe a dozen ships were going down from 57 million to 49 million on the seller side of things so Maybe a tiny bit of buying happened here on the Prophecy, uh, but uh, it's really short-lived. Scorpion next, another battleship that was not doing too hot a couple months ago. 130 million for a battleship is definitely not a lot. So it managed to get back to the 150-160 range, which is still very cheap. But 153 million for the sellers, 136 million for the buyers. And you can see the lack of demand here. Nobody is buying Scorpions at the moment which is a, an unfortunate situation in the tech one market at the moment. Here's the Vexor at the tail end, trying to go back up just a little bit above to 10 million, uh, but uh, not by that much. 10.3 million for the sellers, 10 million for the buyers, and uh, not very uh, characteristic for the Vexor, usually one that is in ample supply. We're not seeing that many on the market at the moment, but just a little bit over 10 million is definitely still pretty cheap compared to prices before ascension so yeah i would say is this true um possibly that this is cva prepping next up at uh, tech 2 at 43 minutes well, 42 50. let's see if we can spot some buy opportunities unfortunately i i do think or sell opportunities of course i do think that we'll need a war uh, if we do start to make investments in these tech 2 ships here is the Ares going back down substantially after a jump up to 30 million buyers 21.5 so i would again like to see those two buy orders drop then we can try to pick some up below 21 million that's probably where you want to try to pick up a couple of Ares. we're slowly getting there for it though especially on the chart claw next also going back down substantially coming to 20.25 million so that's for the sellers buyers 19.5 19.6 million not bad claws below 20 million i would say you can you can try to pick some of those up go for 19.8 uh, and, and and hope that you can pick a couple up again uh, what you don't want to do here is go crazy in the volumes try to pick up maybe two five of them you know go for investment batches of 100 million that at least 
uh, might get absorbed by the market as trying to get rid of this small disruptor and as a result yeah you know close for less than 20 million if you look at the rest of the chart here 25 and even 30 million is not impossible on a nice war looks pretty good from my point of view here to try and uh, maybe pick up a couple of those the crew unfortunately yeah not that much still at 25 million on average 25.7 for the sellers 23.5 for the buyers uh, i would not touch that it's not in the right place aries next um, again don't really like it still basically moving sideways around 50 million 50.3 million for the sellers 44 million for the buyers it's quite a, 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 um, a wide margin but just basically on the lack of supply here so 44 million still a little bit higher on the chart in my opinion to start investing in those the flycatcher goes up in price a little bit so slight sell opportunity goes up to 70 million isk not bad 71 for the sellers 60 for the buyers pretty wide margin but if we're really looking for the buy opportunities you know look for close to 55 million or below that i would say but yeah slight sell opportunity in the flycatcher unfortunately we've not had a buy opportunity in at least five months the heretic next working on that high point from last time up to 65 million uh, falling back to 55 and is already on the way back up so unfortunately 56 million for the sellers maybe 58 uh, if we can get, get rid of those three and then 52 million for the buyers it's again definitely not the time to buy you may want to sell if you manage to buy on some of these low 45 million uh, bottoms so at the moment yeah basically nope on the heretic the hound next uh, had a nice little uh, spike up last week as well to 25 million um, but is settling at 22 so 20 million for the buyers 22.3 for the sellers I would hope that we can get rid of everything up to 19 million or something like that and then it's the no-brainer for the hound here it's a little bit risky um, so it's up to you to decide of course but I think it's early malediction next slowly going back down but this chart is not a great chart especially not to where we are either so selling for 23.5 buying at 22 million pretty much uh no don't like it manticore next uh, so this is what we want to see of course for those buy opportunities a clear drop towards those one year lows here that was a great opportunity 20 manticore 23 so less than 23 get between 22 and 23 on the buyers 22.5 it's still not that bad on the buyer side of things uh, so you could risk it of course we would like to pick him up close to 22 million but yeah maybe manticore this here is is basically because the sellers are up to 25 million but the buyers at 22.5 is not that bad so manticore aries claw these look to be in actually decent places Nemesis next, also working its way down but hesitating at the tail end. So we would like to see 20 million on the charts to come in play. 20 million for the buyers. Uh, you could go for this, but again, I would like to see those drop. 19, yeah, maybe all of these even. It's going to be very hard to do, um, but I would say there's more interesting looking charts. Next up here we've got the purifier. This is definitely not what we like coming off of high point of 27.5 million. Settling at around 25. Nope. Definitely not a buyer of their territory. 24 for the sellers. 22.3 for the buyers. No nope. purifier. Leave that. We need a couple more weeks of increased supply so that we have a buy opportunity. And finally we have the saber. Also not exactly where we want to be on the chart. It's actually at a high point of 55 million. So if maybe you can sell some if you manage to pick some up at 50 million. But it's, it's a very narrow uh, trade here to, to, uh, to actually make. So again wait for that to drop off towards 50 million. Then on the buyers. Yeah we're below that. Um, interesting interesting to see that that 5 million 10 percent margin between buyers and sellers to see sabers you can pick him up for less than 50 million it may not be a bad idea to do so um but again don't go crazy with the volumes because the seller prices are obviously up here quite substantially yeah difficult to do but uh here aries claw and uh, manticore on the on the seller uh, on the bar things uh, side of things seems to be uh, in a decently interesting place to maybe do small investments or something like that hope for a war guys hope for a big war next up a tech tree ships at 4850 
let's go let's start with the destroyers that are showing some uh, market volatility finally um, so supply is going to play a pretty big role they're currently selling for almost 40 million 38.5 but that's just one of them the bad news of course 102 200 here that's still an awful lot of them uh, so this could get squashed down quite uh, quickly, but 40 million for a confessor, not bad. If just a couple of weeks ago, you could have picked those up for uh, 30 million here. Not too bad. Hecate next also showing that pattern going up here, currently selling for 38 million ASK. Um, the guys that have bought a lot of them though are starting to make their moves here again. 345, 120 at 40 billion, and then they're coming in 19, 20, 10, 10, 10, 10 pretty obvious as that an investor is trying to get some profits out of the Hecate and is willing to pay a bit of a premium on that 40 million here so um, you can make some profits on the 30 million mark with some patience potentially you can do more who knows the Jack Daw next currently selling for 40 million we're empty of those so if you bought them for 30 million you could try to sell a couple of them but uh, you might want to hold on as well because the confessor all of this chart does indicate that maybe we'll see a bit of a resurgence of this market when the tech tree rebalance comes out maybe next up here we've got this vapor working on a second spike up to 40 million yeah 40 million for the sellers 35 million for the buyers but again 562 and 249 is a lot of supply so i would not blame you if you're taking some uh, profits on the uh, destroys that you picked up at 30 million isk but uh, I would maybe hold on to a couple of those really cheap ones and see if maybe the market does some interesting things after we get through these hundreds that still come in at 40 million here could be uh, in in the works because of course the tech tree balance is actually bringing these cruisers back uh, in in line with a lot of um, interest and uh, very high prices so actually looks like the rebalance with the final numbers I, I haven't checked out the post sorry about that uh, but that's really brought the cruisers back to the forefront here is the legion currently selling for 186 million isk 168 for the buyers definitely not bad at all uh, seeing that we could have picked some of those up for like 110 million not that long ago Next up here we get the Loki working even better to 214 million for the sellers, 203 for the buyers. So this is the CCP market opportunities. I picked up a couple of each, one of at least one of each, couple of Tengus, something like that. So I could make a little bit of profit on those buyer buy orders. Like look at that, 110 million currently going for almost double that. Not bad at all. Next up here we've got the Proteus, that one is not as big a winner but is still doing okay. 167 million for the sellers, 147 for the buyers as well. And then finally the Tengu actually uh, managed to shoot up in the last week or so. It was the one that was doing the worst, so patience was definitely the right answer here. 162 for uh, the sellers of Tengus, not bad if you pick them up for again 110 million or something like that. Um, so there you go guys the, the cruiser market is back the big winner is the Loki goes up to more than 200 million next in line is the Legion probably a very popular Nelsic meta and as a result here you could take some profits on the cruisers that you bought it's definitely the right time to do so and then finally for the extra product here at 52.50 we are going to take a look at the pirate faction frigates just take a bit of a gander on that market it's also a personal interest because a bpc dropped for me uh, during one of my explorations uh, runs so frigates faction pirates let's start here with the astero going for around 60 million definitely at a high point on the chart this is quite interesting maybe next week i'll take another look at all the um, Sister of Eve ships because we know that last year during the summer we were pretty low it was a buy opportunity at the moment more than 60 million definitely a high price 58 million for the Astero Crewer next look at that very high price as well in fact going up to almost 70 million is 69.5 million not bad um, February you could have bought those for 40 million so that is quite a high price 
Daredevil next, also at a pretty high point, quite interesting. Uh, currently selling for 63 million ISK. Not bad, just a couple of months ago they were going for around 50. The Dramiel next, also at a high price point. Well, that's interesting, 51 million for the Dramiel. Uh, pretty expensive and just a couple of months ago you could have gone for like, what was that, 41 million and uh, earlier in the year less than 40 million is look at that increase in price on most uh, pirate faction frigates because the Garmer actually settling um, at above average 55 million but definitely not at a high point right now 55.8 for the sellers 51.6 for the buyers of Garmers next up you get the succubus one year high and this is actually the blueprint that dropped for me so 63 million for the sellers 57.6 million for the buyers yeah pirate faction frigates at high points quite interesting here is the worm that one is the one exception it's basically averaging at around 60 million is here and uh, coming off of a peak though went up to 80 million a couple of weeks ago but uh, other than that still selling for 56 million Bars at 52.6 million so the worm is not the best one but most of the others pirate faction frigates one year highs this is very good news for uh, explorers because these bpcs drop in something like a 3 out of 10 for instance not bad at all uh, definitely i'm going to make my succubus and uh, sell that one to the market and that's going to be it for this week guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time